Well, this is an elm tree I saw beside the road. And I was so impressed. It stood alone. It was sturdy. It looks like it has survived dozens and dozens of winters and storms. And it uh, is quite a treat to see something so dignified out in the middle of a field. I'm using um, the cobalt blue and white for the sky. I used to use more ultramarine blue, but I found the sky was a little bit purple. Now, some people like a painting with a purple hue. I'll probably go back to it eventually, but presently I'm using the cobalt blue. Nice, light, bright blue skies uh, do sell better. People like to hang them in their office and uh, in their living room and hallways and so on. Reminds them of nice days, pleasant times. It's acrylic on wood, so, and it's a small painting, 10 by 15 centimeters. So with the sky, you have to keep moving in order to keep the entire operation wet. I'm just using a regular brush that you buy at the hobby store in a package for a few dollars. Very inexpensive, but they, they work very well for me. I, I don't have any problem with them at all. As long as I uh, wash them frequently, immediately when I'm finished, swish them in the water. I wash them in water with a little bit of dish soap all of the time, and they last for a very long time many, many months painting every day. I like to get out of the city, into the countryside, up, up to the roads, and, and uh, look at all of the various trees and things. Uh, the trees have got so much personality. Some of them are wild, some of them are perfectly symmetrical, some of them are tough and sturdy and weather-beaten. They have a personality it's, uh, that I, I rather enjoy. And they make great paintings. But if you live in the city, you just look around at any of the parks or boulevards, and you will see all kinds of different trees in all different shapes and sizes and patterns and compositions and colors and there's something about trees that there's something about trees that I really do like.
Now I'm using another old brush. The black color is uh, Payne's Gray and Burnt Sienna. Payne's Gray is a bit on the blue side and Burnt Sienna is a warm color. So it sort of warms up the trunk of the tree. And having the trunk of the tree very dark symbolizes that it is vertical because the light from the sky does not shine on a vertical object the way it does on the grass fields or on the leaves that uh, collect the light from the sunlight from the sky. This is ultramarine blue with a touch of yellow in it. I'm painting on wood panels, 15 by 10 centimeters. I cut them out of uh, thin plywood and prime them several times all the way around on the edges and so on. I'm not sure I would recommend other people doing it. It takes a lot of time and it, you're probably just as well off to go to the art store and purchase your panels. Although I can make, you know, a hundred of them at a time once I get the saws set up. I have jigs for making panels. This is an official miniature, it's 24 square inches. But you can paint it any size you like. You can paint it as small as your fingernail or as large as a wall. If you try this painting, take a photograph of it and email it to Painters Guild of America and we'll critique it for you, give you a, a, a little critique and uh, let you know what your strong points are and what we think possibly you could do to improve it. The email address and information is at the end of this video.
Now I'm using a Chinese watercolor brush or calligraphy brush. They're very inexpensive. They're made by the hundreds of millions. Some kind of hair on them, you know, animal hair. And they don't, they, they run forever. I can use a brush like this probably for a year as long as the paint is only on the tip and I wash it immediately before setting it down. Just uh, making the horizontal stronger to complement or to accent the vertical tree. Well, thank you for watching. Send a uh, photograph of your painting. Painters Guild of America and we'll critique it for you.